Today, we're going to be talking about some of the biggest a-holes in nature. This list is in no particular order, and it's just a compilation of a few of Mother Nature's biggest d-bags. Starting with the cuckoo bird and other brood parasites. What is a brood parasite, you might ask? Well, it's a species that puts their eggs into other species' nests, hoping that the returning mother will take in the imposter egg and raise it as one of their own. They also have the ability to match their egg colours to the host species, just for added realism. That would be like if someone came into the delivery room after a mother gave birth, and just slid their own baby in, as if no one would notice. Unlike that analogy, the brood parasite strategy actually works, already making these birds certified arseholes. But it gets worse, specifically for the cuckoo bird. Not only does it live rent-free in your nest, it also hogs the resources and grows much more quickly than other hatchlings. This leads to them outmuscling the other hatchlings and outcompeting them for the food from the mother. But wait, it gets even worse. The cuckoo specifically is known for pushing native nest eggs and hatchlings out of the nest when the mother isn't looking. So not only are they thieves and burglars, they're also spawn killers and home wreckers. After growing sufficiently from being an egg murdering freeloader, the cuckoo bird then leaves the nest and recognises other cuckoo bird vocalisations and joins a flock of them, leaving the nesting mother with either very weak or no children left. Let me just plug in the arsehole amateur and yeah that's what i thought would happen and guess what happens if the nesting mother isn't psyoped into raising the cuckoo chick a gang of adult cuckoos come and destroy the nest and try to kill the mother really they are quite massive arseholes another one of nature's arseholes is the ant and the reason for that is that they are one of the only other species apart from humans to wage wars and employ the use of slave labor they will literally enslave other ant colonies within their species and even other ant species. They usually have a slave raiding party, which will invade the target colony, killing the defenders and returning with ant pupa and larva, which some will be eaten and others will be used as slaves. The slaves are then forced to work their entire lives until they die or until the slave masters decide to eat them. It's quite a grim reality for these ant slaves. Their walls are brutal as well, due to the fact that Ants simply don't retreat. Ants will literally all fight to the death until the end, because they know that if they fall, then their colony dies, which is their sole purpose for living. Being in the middle of an ant fight, you'll see stuff like three ants holding down a bigger ant, while a large ant then rips them to pieces, as well as decapitations, dismemberments, and all types of injury. Ants also declare wars on other species as well, including, but not limited to, wasps, bees, and if you're unlucky, humans. The reason why most other species don't go to war is because most animals' prime directive is to pass on their genes and ensure their species continues. Therefore, war just removes a lot of the fertile members of the species for not much gain. In the case of ants though, the workers are all sterile and have physiologies that are built for combat and work. So it's trading a bunch of sterile workers to ensure the safety of their colony so that the next generation can survive. So if you think about it reductively like that, it kind of makes more sense for ants to go to war than it does for humans. Dolphins are another one of nature's arseholes, which you might not believe because they have one of the best PR teams in the world. If I say dolphin, the images of a cute, smart sea puppy come to mind. And you might have heard of stories of dolphins saving humans from drowning or leading them back to shore. In reality, it's all a lie propagated by Big Dolphin, who don't want you to know about the real activities they get up to. They are another animal who shares a characteristic exclusive to only us and dolphins, which is the act of killing other animals strictly for sport. Researchers only noticed this in the 90s when they found a bunch of porpoise carcasses that hadn't been eaten, just piling up on the sea floor. The cause of death was primarily blunt force trauma, leaving suspiciously dolphin snout-shaped bruises. These bruises are fatal due to dolphins' ability to use their sonar to locate vital organs of victims to inflict as much damage as possible. Alright, Miss Porpoise, we'll get justice for little Timmy. We just need you to point out the pipe in this lineup. And don't worry about it. It's a one way mirror. They can't see us, but we can see them. So, Dayton boys, he's gone crazy. The thing is, porpoises and dolphins don't even intersect on the food chain. They aren't even competing for food, nor are they in a predator-prey relationship. 
Dolphins are just arseholes. Dolphins also kill baby dolphins in the same way, but this time there is an actual reason for it. It's so that they can breed with the dolphin mother, which wouldn't be possible if she still had her younglings. Let me just quickly pull up the arsehole amateur. Oh yeah, never mind. Koalas are also huge arseholes, and I cover their exploits extensively in my Fixing Animal Weaknesses video. But, to sum up the video, they are low IQ, high impulse, SCD riddled little gremlins. I also go over how to fix the issues of other animals, such as the goblin shark, the pigeon and the anteater, if you're interested in that type of thing. If you like these types of videos, consider subscribing and maybe hitting the like button. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.